Hi, good morning to all of you. So we'll continue with our uh, integration of the node. For doing that integration, we are preparing the some of the components inside the TS server. We call it as TS server because it's a TS TypeScript. TS is for TypeScript, and it is acting as a going to act as a server as well. So it is a microservices. So microservices, the concept of microservices being like it doesn't do very big activities. It does a like insert, delete, all that activity it does. It doesn't do a big activity of any big processing or anything. That is what the microservices is all about. So that it consumes less uh, resources of the com uh, lab. We call it as hardware. So less resources of the hardware it will use. That is the idea behind. So I'm going back to this uh, Visual Studio code. So yesterday we were creating the data that is in the controller. So in controller, we had a class and we created a check DB. So the main purpose of this DB check is it will check whether the DB is existing and it is we are able to connect or not. If we are able to connect it, it will give the return the message. If we are not able to connect it, so basically it doesn't have to return anything. It just have to uh, settle. I don't need any return actually for this because it has to set the variable. That is our aim. It doesn't have to return anything. It will. It is a void. It will just we call that particular script so that script runs and it results. And if DB is true, it will update this particular field to. DB connected field to true. Sir, if, yes, screen share. Can you please? Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sharing the screen now. Sorry. Okay. So I'm shared my screen. Please confirm once you are able to see the screen. I'm in the Visual Studio code now. Yes, so sir. I just removed that return command. Uh, previously, there was a return command here. This command, I just removed it because in this case, we don't need a return. So we just remove that return from here. This is what I just did. So because what I need is as soon as the DB check DB is done, if DB is able to connect it, that means result or success, then this DB connected will become true. And DB checking check running becomes false. That means it is not anymore checking. It comes out to come out of the loop. So it comes out of this function. That means it is freed up from this function. If not, I'll come here. Is DB checking becomes true? Yes, it is true. And I'm another 30 seconds, it will wait. It will check the DB again. That means this will be continuously checking the DB until the DB is connected. As soon as DB, this is called recursive function. I'm calling the same function from inside. I am calling the same function every 30 seconds until DB is up and running. This is for connection error. If there is a connection error, I am checking the DB. If there is no connection error, I am not checking the DB. I will continue to query error. I am not bothered. Query error will be returned as DB connected true. So I have a success. If success is true, if connection error is true, or success is false. That means I'll be here. That means it's a query related error. So ultimately I'm setting this variable. So this variable, I want to take it out. That is why I did a get. Get is DB connected. I'm taking this variable out is DB connected. I can treat it as a property as well. Uh, property means in our get set property. Using that, we can do that. I'll give you as an example so you create a class in such a way use the get set property set the db is db connected property with the true or false according to the value of the command i leave it to you as part of the exercise so i am using a method get is db connected in case if db is connected is false i am triggering this check db but i am returning immediately this is a return value. The return value is a boolean and it is returning the value. I created a class now. 
this class i want to whenever before i call any db command i just want to ensure db is connected if db is not connected i don't want to execute the query that is the aim so in api now i don't need all this i'll put it in a different way now initialize can be there that's not an issue so initialize but i don't want inside the initialize i don't want this so api is loaded so i don't need a p because i don't want to connect the uh, psql uh, that reusable function from here so it should call the controller so i load the controller here now so i load the controller modules now i am in api api is part of the api directory route directory so from route directory i need to go to controller so double dot i can see a controller in controller i need to use common controller i need to check the class control space i get the list of that class all the class i'll get the list shift alt f to reorganize the now having said that i need to uh, instantiate the class because it's a class i need to instantiate the class so cmn control i use this word a let let or constant in this case constant will do because i don't want any accidentally anybody to change this new of common control because it's a class name there is no constructor because of that i don't need to use any of the uh, parameter here it is a dummy so common control is initialized now i now initialize first is i want to check the db first so check the db so i can also keep here one more variable uh, this is for my local variable here so or i can every time i can call it from the controller anything is okay so i don't uh, so first is i just want to initialize this so common control common control dot check db i just check this db because somebody has to initialize that candidate to load it so i am initializing from here so as soon as the web book is loaded now this initialization will take care of that and it initializes the variable i save it i already started the service it will loading the service now the fs project is connected so i am initializing the project so i don't know there is no variable here i'll just go back here common control here i'll just put the console log console log db connected db connected here console log could not connect to db will retry will retry in 30 seconds right so here as a console log this is a never happening event okay because this query here only check db and the query is directly it will return it's a never happening event still i just put query error db connected i'll say db connected that's what my interest is connected query having error i just say that but it doesn't it never never happening event this if if this happens it is a what you call that means your base query itself your check query itself is wrong anyway so common db i now execute this i save this save all it is already done so now you can see db connected so now because i put a console log you got the db connected i make a query mistake i make a query mistake here just see what it happens it is in common control so common db common db here i just make a query mistake control f s query mistake so let us see what it does connected but query having error that's a it's just an additional information that's it but db is connected there is no problem with the db for connection failure i i will do it later uh physically i have to either ip address or something i need to change i will do that later 
because i don't want to accidentally also expose my credentials to this uh, community so for time being i want to play safe so i will do it later okay so we have done the first part now as soon as the route is loaded we are able to connect our what is our main aim our main aim is i want to register register the page so register is it is like this so router dot use command is the sorry router is the command that we want to use i just take syntax for syntax i just take from some project uh, just take the syntax any project i can take for that matter not here i'll open a new window there are multiple routing one is post uh, get put delete all these are common methods available in uh, http these are all some of the common methods i'll just go to some place some api some api to just collect the route i'll just take one syntax of the route later we'll code it so this is the syntax right so this syntax i'll use it here so end call it curly braces end router dot use so here i will change it as register so this is a post register because i am receiving the data as a post parameter so get post put delete all these are proper methods available as part of html sorry http request http methods are all get get means i only can get query parameter can be passed so post is the normal normal thing that is mostly used uh, we only use post or uh, uh, get we don't use put we don't use delete direct delete we don't use all these methods as part of the routing this is controlled through the security so that accidental deletion or anything we avoid in the uh, code so these are all part of the security we need to do that i am not coming into that now so this is my routing so this routing is enabled how it gets enabled this is enabled through index.ts that is the entry point because this is where i am listening so as soon as come here i should have that api route if api route is there it will redirect to route api so it will redirect to this api here this method has to be there if this method is there that means api slash register i'll come here what i'll do for time being is i just say json sorry response res is the response response dot json i return the success true message received your request i just give this how do i test this i just make router dot post one register i have not yet written the code for actually registering the data in our db i am just making sure the routing works so the routing works so register i come so re, slash api slash register is the end point i need to use the port that is exposed is 6000 port you notice that i am using a 6000 port so how do i test it uh, that is called postman you can download postman it is very very good tool for api testing i am doing an api testing because microservices ours is a microservices which is an api right it is an api so i uh, create one more separate thing all my projects are in my microservices so i have so many commands for every method that will go through this unit testing whatever we create in the project it goes through the unit testing i create a new uh, thing new container they call this as a container so i collection sorry not container collection so i create a new collection i rename this collection as upskill all the methods whatever we create that can be tested here upskill is my collection inside this collection i want to create a request right add a request i can add a request i can 
rename the request. So in my case, register. Register, usually I give the method name itself. Post is the command. HTTP, there is no HTTPS. Local host, colon, 600. This is my entry point, my server entry point. This is, we call this as domain. So local host, colon, 6000 is my server entry point. API is my route. Register is my data. Register is my method name. Since it is a post request, I need to give a body. Or if I don't, this post and in my code, this post has to match. This post and this post has to match. So post, here also post. If I use get here, I need to use get here. These are all the methods sub up supported by the HTTP. Get, post, put, patch, delete, copy, head, options, link, unlink, purge, lock, unlock, property, find, view. All these are available, but we generally restrict ourselves to get and post so that no other commands or all other commands are rejected so that our uh, system is secured. So suppose whatever you give here, whatever you give here, that should match here, router dot. So it should also match to whatever the event that you call here. So in our case post, so I'm using post here. So there is no physical value I'm sending. I'm just triggering send. So it says 404 not find. So API register 404 not find is the So local host 6000 HTTP is the request. So service is running or not. Yes, service is running, but I am not getting the request. Well, let us see that. So register is the command. Yeah. API, oh, save. I have not saved this, unfortunately. So I have not saved it now. So I saved it now. So it is DB connected. I send this request now. Now you can see true received your request. So this is how your node server or services is being tested. It's a service. We call it as a service. Node service is just getting tested now through this mode. So local host 6000 actually now node is acting as a service come server. So it, it can accept as many connections as possible. So 6000, I have connected to 6000, DB is connected. Now this connection is established. I got the response of 200. Size is 285K is the response size. I got the success true. Whatever I type there, I got that message here. So I have multiple ways I can do it. This is one way of sending the response. Another way of sending the response is response dot send status. Send status, say whatever the status you want to send. I call it as 200. 200 is the general status that we send. Then if I let that get compiled, and if I send this, you will get OK, that's all. You don't get anything else. It is not a JSON response now. It's a plain text. It's a plain text. I received it as a content. So that is also possible. So you can use send also. Send, receive, text. Right? I can send this also. I saved it. Compiling. And I just click on send. So I received text. This is a plain text. It is not a JSON, it's a plain text, right? Generally, the rest.send is a security violation. So we generally use this. In case if I want to give a 400 error for some mistake, I need to do status packet 400, right? Uh, bad request. I give here message, bad request. This also possible. Add request. I can give it success. I call it as false now. You can give this also. Send status 
bracket so status code whatever i want to send with the json content so i can do that as well. register you get a 400 here status is 400 bad request i give the message as bad request success false so connectivity is there still but i am sending the response because your request i validated your request your request is not correct so because of that i am returning a bad request so all this can be done through postman postman is a very useful tool you can use this tool for all your api based testing so api based testing we can use this tool in node everything is considered as an api right we call it as a micro services so i now come back so we just created a route we handle the route now i just don't do the spelling mistake i just do a spelling mistake here register one so this method in our route it doesn't exist so if i send here you see a html content 404 not found that means this method is not there all this response code details are available in global so http response codes right it is the big you can go with uh, uh, what do you call wiki also all the details are available a lot of people gives lot of information right 200 201 202 203 204 205 you have so many things 3x redirection 4x client errors bad request unauthorized payment required or forbidden etc etc so you can all these are standards available you can check accordingly this 411 is basically this is where we check the length of the data if our length of the data is very predefined length cannot change so that nobody can hack it so all that can be done here 400 series so many are there 5 5xx series right these are all 5xx series unofficial codes right unofficial means it is there but nobody uses it nginx specific codes cloud for specific codes elastic load balancer specific codes right all these are available wikipedia everything will learn so that you don't send any wrong data anywhere so you don't send a wrong status code that is very important you are not supposed to send a wrong status code okay so all these are available 429 too many requests this is what we call it as rate limit so that is comes under 420 it's a standard so anywhere you call 429 we know that it is too many requests that means i am receiving too many requests from one ip address rate limit so don't ever change this codes try to follow this codes explanations are given so that is what this response is all about so in my code fs project this response is all about that so this is again an asynchronous operation you want to uh, respond you need to do await or ap appropriate things so that's why i use asynchronous here this asynchronous means this request in case i deal with this request and response as my parameter so post is having two parameter that is managed by express express router manages that so router post so request and response so response i'm using in the code that's why you don't have that underline if i start using the request you will get that information as well so this is what the uh, routing is all about now what we need to do is we are going to insert the record in the register so we have the table yesterday i just i'll connect it through putty again i can connect it to putty i can connect it through db viewer multiple possibilities are there i'll go with putty now so this is my cloud environment it is not available for you please these are all goes with the keys etc so right now uh, you don't have to worry about so i just connected i'll use this upskill yesterday we have created the table called upskill 
the database called upskill i'm connecting to that upskill it is connected i created a table called uh, slash d slash d table called uh, users so i go to that users to just show you the tables so this is the table that we created i want to insert the record inside this table if i am able to insert the record inside this table my the service portion is completed so how do i insert the data inside this table so i go back to my model so i go back to my visual studio any questions up, up to this please let me know if you have any questions please let me know Oh. Yeah, I come back to you. Any questions if you have, please let me know. If not, we'll just proceed further. Okay, nothing is there, so I'll just proceed. I'll go back to my Visual Studio Code. Now, in this route, before I complete the routing, I go to the user component. This is the user DB component, users DB component. I want to insert the register, that is user registration. So I want to register the user. So I create a method. This is the endpoint. Okay, this is the endpoint register register i just use the word register and it should have a parameter either i can define the parameter one by one or i just declare the param as any so that i know what that param i'm using so this param can be like you can have a class type declared that is called interface right you can interface you can use the interface type and declare what type it has to follow. So I'm using any, any means any data it can come. But later you can define that what data you want to declare as well. So as we go, we can improve on that. That becomes more, what you call, uh, you are following more rules appropriately. That means you cannot send any other type. The only difficulty is you cannot, on the fly, you cannot change the data. That's it. Anyway, you might have known all the query and all already. So I, I use the word constant query text equals I insert insert is my insert into since it's are all commands I can use capital uh, table database is upscale I know users is the table name right within bracket columns I go back to the uh, this one I ID is a auto insertion so i am not touching it email i cut and paste because i don't want any mistake anywhere name name password so this is the three columns i want to enter values it's not a multi line entry it's a single line one row at a time i will be entering so values since i am using capital i'll use the capitals here values so email i want to pass it as parameter now please remember i am not passing the variable here if i pass the variable i will have a problem of injection sql injection problem so i should not pass the variable i pass it as a parameter so where is the value of the parameter the next question is how do i pass the value of the parameter constant query param so the value is available underneath that param any. So parameter dot email, param dot name, param dot password. It's a plain password. I'm not doing any modifications now because our aim is to integrate this entire system back to back. Just to integrate. Because of that, I'm not worried about anything else. Okay. So query text, query text is the input, query text is the output, so query param, so q param, this is already taken care. So I just want to make sure the way we follow the data. 
so now i need to f and bb query dot i want to return this whatever i follow i just want to return fn query method name register method name is a string so i use the word register not a variable query text qry txt query param qri param so here the param is not empty param is having some value so that's all my first ins it will insert the record but how do i call this register who will call this register so that is to be done by the controller because as we said db model is the end point so model only exposes to the db connection nobody else is exposed to the db connection so we ensure that model is the only guy who is exposed to this db connection nobody else should get into this db connection that is what we are ensuring so we made a register we inserted this command with this and then we pass the parameter now param dot email because i am assuming that this param has all this component that is an assumption with which i am following then i create the param dollar one is nothing but email dollar two is nothing but name dollar three is nothing but password please remember we are not supposed to create the password in the plain text it should be properly uh, <coughs> encoded or hashed or properly some activity to be done we we'll learn that activity later our job is to end to end integration we want to ensure that we are able to make it <coughs> okay so we have now node side model side we created a register <coughs> perfect now this register i want to use it from controller so which controller i can use now i don't want common controller because common controller is by purpose of common controller is it is used by across all the people so i'll create one more controller file called user controller tell you also i'm making it as a case sensitive that is uh, camel case that is okay so common controller <clears throat> so anything i want to create it as a class so i start with export class name user controller class name because it's a class name i am having u capital c capital so class name followed by oh i think uh, i copy this constructor here so i copy this constructor so user controller export class i missed the class name export class controller this one so i do that what he has to use now i have i want him to use the db controller like right? so import from so it is model so model is two levels out one level outside so model inside the model i want to use user db not common db i want to use user db inside the user db there is already a method created user db query so i use that user db query as my imported candidate here so the first method that i want to create here is under the class method method is register so register is the method asynchronous register is the method parameter yes there is a parameter param colon any so what it does let result equals so since i uh, map that query i need to instantiate that class so constant so user db user db equals new users db query 
this is my instantiation i have done that instantiation now user db dot register already available i am passing the param as it is so my result can be three results are possible if result right dot success uh, make sure await is used because i need to ensure that so success if result is success i return now what do you want to return success equal to true we always follow the json syntax so there is no change or there is no ambiguity here all our services that we create the response of the services is always json so that it is easy to code easy to maintain right then row count always i pass this row count so result dot row count then rows result dot rows always i pass this outside else else if i don't want if if some problem return success equal to true sorry false message message equals message equals so i call it as result dot message because that message i am passing whether it is a query error whether it is a normal error i am not bother if message is there i just pass result dot message so anything i am not worried about anything else right so common control i want to access it from everywhere so when i want to call this query i want to call this query only if my db connection is through otherwise i don't want to call this so that is possible because that we have already added that as yes, part of the api that as part of the api route so as part of the api route i already have that variable here called check db right so i can only do here itself i can check if a uh, query that is the common control common control is used common control dot get is db connected if it is true right you proceed further if it is not true i need to it's a function so you put it here so else i can put it here itself response dot status so i can say there is a non availability of the db so non availability is generally 401 not found right so or you can give appropriate error 404 is also okay 404 dot json i call it as uh, success false right message db failure db connection failure i after some time i can just pass the message to the end user so it is not appropriate to give 504 it is actually equivalent to crash 500 series 500 series because there is a down db down so this may not be a uh, regular happening event once in a while yes it may have but what happens as soon as this function gets called this function will continuously retry this uh, check again and again because when db is failed automatically he will check the db right he will check the db and he will try to connect so when when the new failure happens it is part of the user controller user controller user controller so here if at this point there is a possibility that the db connection might have got failed possibility if that possibility is there then you can check 
if i just want to ensure if there is a db failure or is it something so result dot connection error if there is any connection error then i want to call that db check db it is not available here so i just say import from it is part of controller so i am in the same controller only so common controller same hierarchy common controller constant common controller class instantiation common controller now i just say i just call that db if connection error you just call get common control right dot get db connect just call this guy that's all if case of connection error you just call this guy this can be called in all places everywhere you can call this function now that is why we said it is common it is used by everybody so only now important is common control should not use user db that you need to ensure so if it calls user db you will get an error only in case of error you are checking whether there is a connection error if there is no connection error you are not bothered if there is a connection error you are indirectly calling that function so that that will set and keep continuing to check the db is there or not there so with this what we have done is so register param everything we have got now we need to take that from the input so we need to take it from the input that is nothing but api.ts in routing now this request is having the data so where the data is the data is available as part of request dot body so request dot body is holding the data i just print now console log before i call anything i just print console log request dot body now having said that uh, here i'll just say uh, 200 request received request received i just console in the server i'm just putting the console or i can just pass that body itself here as part of the response that is but not advisable that is okay so console log request dot body i'm just because this is where this request is holding the body content let us see this what should be the content email name password that is my content go to postman go to body go to raw make it as a json right create a json now email so any email so abc dot abc at the rate gmail dot com right make sure everything is within quoted that is stringified then name the same name that we use there name property so my name right then i have a password within quotes all within quotes password colon my so i say password itself so this is my json string now so i go to raw body content select the body content because it is part of post in that raw table in that type is json so that is important when i type this json automatically the header got uh, gets added that is nothing but uh, application.json content type application.json as soon as i type here he will add that header there so when i say raw and the json type ja, i now inserted the json type now my postman request is ready so that postman request now i will receive it as part of the console log now let us see that send so uh, 2404 found 
So because register one, I remove that register. I remove that one from that register. Send. Now you can see request received. Success is false. That is okay. Undefined. I have not defined that. Undefined. I've got that one change. I need to do. That change is very important. That is nothing but JSON content. I need to treat that routing. I have to tell the router that all I'm receiving is the JSON record. So I need to tell the router. So that is conveyed at this FS project. So that is to be, otherwise I don't, he doesn't recognize this request. He didn't recognize this request. That's why he got the, so this is true. So that is why he has got this as empty. To make it as body in index.ts, I need to add two components. I'll add it from here. Uh, that is the syntax, all same. This two. So I need to tell that express that my uh, Content is all uh, JSON. So I just add this content over here. Again, it is an app.use. So I don't want more than one MB of data to flow through. So I just limit. I just say it is content is JSON limit. This I need to add to tell that express all I'm, you are dealing with is a express. That is called express promise router. That is also possible to convert that into body. We'll just check that. Now I am commented. I saved the file. I again send. You got the true. Check whether you received the body or not. So still body is not received. That means we have to use the express promise router. Express promise router is another candidate which I have already added in part of the code. So I have already added. So we'll see that tomorrow. So ultimately you need to get inside this console log, this request I need to get, I need to able to recognize the body. If I, I just print the entire request now. I just saved it. The entire request, you can print it and check as well. You can see the entire request. So whatever the content is, you will see it. Here you will not see the actual body content here. That is why we need to do little bit of change. That change is nothing but promise router. Right? We'll do that as part of the next uh, session. That is tomorrow or Monday. So this is the entire request. Okay. So we'll see that in our next session. So make sure you understand all this by repeating this again and again. So that you understand each and every component of this and then try to whatever is possible try to understand you don't have to understand each and everything but try to understand because it helps you to debug okay fine thank you thanks a lot